In our program area, as we in the district of Gujarat, we managed to identify seven farmers. It's just a work in progress. So we continue, but so far we could identify seven farmers whom I went and met personally. And from them, three of them turned out to be close to what we are looking for. So just to share that. Uh, some of the things are very sort of uh, common with what uh, Sukhpal has already talked about. Some of the major uh, characteristics which were common among all three that I could uh, identify. So the land holding was well bigger, roughly around uh, two hectares. As Sukhpal mentioned, it was not possible to get people below a land holding of two hectares who could really earn this much of uh, and uh, generally had livestock uh, as well, two, one cow and one or two buffaloes. So roughly uh, two or three livestock. And uh, they were all very hard work and taking personal initiative compared to other farmers who might get along with them. And uh, the roughly the ages were between 40 to 60. One was 40, the other was 33 and 60. And all of them owned wells of their own, which they had actually invested in, in the last 10 years with the money that they had earned from agriculture. We all had pumps as well to uh, extract the water. They invested in pipes. Water quality was very variable. So that was one issue which would probably affect sustainability in the long run. That's why I described that quality. The quality of water in <coughs> their wells was uh, not very good. A very high PDS. Agriculture diversification, all of them were growing more than uh, five crops. They were growing cotton was a major crop, followed by vegetables <coughs> right up to the end of summer. So uh, they were growing chilies, they were growing uh, onions, they were growing tomatoes, brinjals, uh, and uh, cumin. All right. uh, now one of them was also a sort of entrepreneur in the sense that he had uh, assembled a mini tractor, which was something new which I never found among any of the other uh, we <laughs> had uh, assembled this tractor by buying some uh, spare parts from Rajput and he claims, I in fact saw the tractor that he had done and uh, I met some other farmers who were using this tractor also. So uh, it's priced at one and a half lakh rupees and it's very uh, available to small land holders. And uh, he's, uh, he claims that he makes about uh, 10 of them every year. And his family is in Saigon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he has two sons who are full-time into farming. He's the one who's 60 years old. And uh, his sons are now sort of taking over his farming. One of the sons has gone away from farming. He's a teacher at a school in Jamtagar. Son education. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is this uh, very very special case that I came across, and uh, the rest of them, all of them are into trading of uh, cotton. One of them has a shop which he rents out uh, in Chotila, and uh, all of them are into some kind of a service provision. So in in some sense, they all are entrepreneurs of some sort. So that is something that they are doing apart from agriculture and production. One of them has, uh, in fact, got poor quality land very close to where his house is. It was completely rocky and undulating. And the last six months he's leveled it. He's invested 30,000 rupees <coughs> using the earth moving machine, the JCB. And he is now doing cumin in that. That land was completely unproductive. And he's converted it to, it's about uh, half a meter or so. All of them have assets. They have two wheelers. Akka houses and dish teams. Uh, but all of them have only been able to uh, study up to primary level. Mike. All of them have studied up to second standard. The mm -hmm. primary next tractor has studied up to class 7. And the third one has studied up to class 6. So very uh, private education. So they all are sending their children out to get their education. So they want mm -hmm. children who have gone beyond primary education. And they are staying outside in boarding schools and they are paying for that. All of them are maintaining a diversity of trees on the farm for fewer wood and fruits largely. And some like cavity we use for domestic purposes. But they all claim that they can't do without farmyard diving. 
they need farmyard labor you know, because the quality of soil is way down and they need to replenish it regularly but they don't have enough. So that was one issue you know, related to the soil quality. None of them use any kind of biopesticides. One of them uses drip which was subsidized in the APR recipe and the only guy who used to come on the field. All have soil quality complaints uh, as I just mentioned. Some of the common characteristics that we treat entrepreneur style and we presented all of them. All of them are doing intensive as well as diversified agriculture. Land alone is not the source of income. They have leveraged land for them to get under their income. Replication was only found in one village. There was one Pramoda village which uh, one had first visited and uh, 70% of the farmers are into this kind of thing. But not all of them want this kind of thing. They are all into diversified agriculture and intensified agriculture. And uh, marketing of produce, especially vegetables, can be an issue. When I go a bit further, they were sort of not very sure whether it is sustainable. And they have issues of marketing. Uh, water and soil quality is also. Children were not sure that it is actually water. So there are some issues. But I'm still looking at it, uh, I need to look at it more closely, I need to revisit that and understand a few more things. So this is all that I have to talk about right now. I'm happy to have you